on time. That's that's a miracle. <laughs> I click start streaming, and if experience with YouTube is any indication, when it actually starts streaming is anybody's guess. Well, Intel's launched a new CPU. But wait, we should probably wait for Facebook to to catch up. Let's vamp for a few moments. Yes, we will totally vamp. It's fine. <laughs> Everybody just. <laughs> just scream to discuss Facebook. <laughs> We're dual Who streaming. Who cares about Facebook? We're dual streaming to Facebook. Everybody remember the webcaster? Well, there's a webcaster X2, which makes streaming to Facebook really easy. So, yeah, thanks, webcaster. Your Facebook streamer thing is streaming to Facebook. So, yeah. Oh. It says the container format is not good on the primary string. Container format? It looks okay. That's up for X264, so I don't know. Nothing's changed there. Hey, go home, YouTube. You're drunk. Let's wait for everybody on YouTube to be like, oh my gosh, everything is completely okay. Yeah, I think we're doing okay. Probably can start. Wow, and I just get the notification that we're live, so that's really good. So, yeah. So, welcome, everybody. Coffee Lake is a thing. Um, and it's live. And, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, MSI has uh, fixed us up with, I don't know, like seven motherboards. There's there's these two, but there's also systems behind us. So it's kind of nuts. I mean, what more do you want? It's 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 completely insane. So We also have two CPUs from the new Intel launch CPUs. We've got the i5 and i7. Both the K versions, which are really hard to find right now. And uh, <laughs> we're going to tell you about them. I'm Wendell. This is Ryan. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be amazing. All right. So the first up with the new launch, you guys have probably all seen all of the Z370 Coffee Lake launch videos. That's fine. We're gonna go through it again. It, the, there's a new chipset. Every motherboard here is Z370. The Z370 chipset. That is the overclockable chipset. You'll you'll remember from previous launches from Intel that the Z chipsets were the ones that were overclockable. But the Z370 chipset is the only chipset that's launching this time around, which is a little unusual. And no, the Coffee Lake CPUs are not backward compatible with any other motherboard. So if you want to run, you know, the new 8th generation core i3, i5, i7, you've got to have a Z370 motherboard. And that's why we have all of these here to show you. <laughs> the full, all of your options from MSI in terms of that, because you're going to have to buy one if you want these chips. Uh, the, the lineup this time is really interesting. There are six CPUs from Intel. Uh, there's two i7s, two i5s, and two i3s. One each is overclockable. Um, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of nuts. The, the real exciting part, though, is the six-core i5s and i7s. The i3s are quad-cores. True quad-cores, no hyper-threading, so four-core, four-thread. The i5s are six-core, six-thread. The i7, six-core, 12-thread. Um, so we've got a lot of testing and... Uh, it's, it's, it's really a lot of fun. So the roadmap, if you want to take a look at the roadmap, the Intel roadmap, oops, wrong, wrong screen. There's the roadmap. Uh, well, part of it. Oh. <laughs> you could probably shrink it slightly. Yeah, we changed resolutions. Before yeah, we started. live streams, woo! Yeah, so uh, new chipset coming in 2018, maybe? I don't know. These were leaked slides. It wasn't, wasn't really like super looped into what's going on with from you know the Intel side of things. But yeah, I mean, I, you guys feel like maybe the, uh, the, the launch here was a little bit accelerated as a response to AMD? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of exciting. The, uh, the roadmap, though, is, is, is pretty interesting in terms of like chip launch and and all of the stuff that, that goes with that. So, you know, I don't know. Moving right along. Uh, this is the new stuff. So you wanna see the new stuff that's in the CPU? This is the new stuff according to Intel. 
Um, I, I like that the, the, the they're saying it's like you get a bunch more uh, PCI Express lanes. So yeah, a bunch more, but not really. You've got 16 PCI Express lanes from the CPU. It's the chipset that provides more connectivity. We're going to talk about connectivity on the Godlike Gaming um, a little bit uh, uh, a little bit later in the program. But yeah, they used all of the PCI Express lanes on the Godlike Gaming. Literally all of them, pretty much. So it's kind of nuts. Um, let's see. Oh, it's slightly off the top. I can't read it. It's all good. Whoops. Uh, that's you just covered PCI Express, right? Yeah. So uh, the the DMI. So like, let me explain Z370. It's not a lot different from Z270. You get the CPU. The CPU provides 16 PCI Express lanes, and then there's the DMI interface, which goes to the chipset. Uh, this right here on the Tomahawk, and that provides connectivity for the rest of the peripherals. It, it kind of makes sense because. You know, USB devices tend not to be that slow. I mean, most USB devices are not 10 gigabits per second, even though they might support USB 3.1 Gen 2. Um, most SATA devices are not going to saturate the connection. So the, the chipset provides a way to multiplex all of that data and feed it to the CPU over a relatively small PCI Express 3.0 by 4 equivalent connection. So that's about as much bandwidth as you get. Enter M.2s. M.2s are also PCI Express 3.0 by 4. So they're getting to the point, M.2s are getting to the point where they'll use pretty much all of that bandwidth. Um, so you can have contention with other stuff, but we're actually gonna, we're gonna take a look. The Godlike Gaming has three NICs. We're, we'll, we're gonna do transfer tests later in the live stream and show you how fast you can get with three gigabit NICs, which is like 340 megabytes per second. But we're gonna demo that because it's kind of nuts. Um, and so, you know, but if you're running like M.2 RAID, it's still basically the same situation for PCI Express. On, uh, on that side of things. It's just that Intel provides more PCI Express connectivity off of the chipset for peripherals, but there's not a more bandwidth between the chipset and the CPU. So that's only for like the super nerds out there. Oh, and the, the RAM is up to DDR4 2666 stock, but a lot of these motherboards, you know, DDR4 3600, DDR4 4000, and because you've got six cores to feed now on the i5 and the i7, we're finding in our benchmarks that we'll get to um, that the extra memory speed actually does help a bit, especially if we're talking about like 1080p, 140 FPS type gaming. So um, let's take a look at the CPU lineup. All right, this is our CPU lineup. This is the full lineup. We've got the 8700K and the 8700. The 8600, the 8400, the 8350, and the 8100. It's kind of small. I can't read it. It's, it's really far away. And this is the, um, uh, you know, this is the full breakdown in terms of like memory speed, core count, that kind of thing. Uh, check out the max turbo frequency. Pay attention especially to the max turbo frequency because the max turbo frequency it changes depending on how many cores you have. But most motherboards will let you, you know, like you can get a freebie overclock sort of kind of and run all cores at the max turbo. So like with the Intel i7 8700K, if you're running one core out of the box, technically no overclock, that one core, if you're running a process that's only really using one core, you're going to get 4.7 gigahertz out of the box. Um, and so it turns out that you can overclock pretty much all the cores to 4.7. And so just setting... Not changing anything, not changing the voltage, not really doing anything. Well, up in the voltage slightly, maybe, you can get the 4.7. But when you push 4.8, 4.9, uh, some other stuff happens. But we'll get to that a little bit more on the benchmarking side of things. The i5 with the six cores doesn't produce quite as much heat as the i7, so things are a little different there. Um, but the clock speeds are close to the same. And then the non-K parts are, of course, the base clock is quite a bit lower, but the maximum boost clock is not really that much lower. So depending on if you're working in boost or, you know, uh, you're playing to the base. Uh, but remember, you can't overclock the non-K parts. And you can only get Z-series motherboards, which is kind of weird, because if you wanted a CPU and you don't intend to overclock it, you're still paying for the Z-series chipset, which supports overclocking, which is a little weird this time around. So, big question, do you want to upgrade? Because you will have to buy a motherboard. There's no other option. <laughs> And so uh, if you'll switch us over to the pricing here, that's going to be a big part of, you know, the, the equation. Now, this is retail pricing, like in terms of like what we've been able to buy on Amazon, uh, it's not exactly the same. Yeah. 
but maybe eventually you'll get this. But of course, it is launch day. The uh, the situation on pricing, like I, I guess, if you want to upgrade, it really depends on what you're running and what you're doing, um, and that's really that's really what it comes to. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about overclocking because we're going to talk about like value of the platform and all that. And we're going to go through all these motherboards too, so it's going to be nuts. All right, so overclocking, 1.3 volts ish is kind of safe. Um, this is all anecdotal, by the way. This is not our full testing. So we have not done like super full testing. We've only had really a few days with the CPUs. Um, uh, for cooling, we're using uh, 140 or 240 and 280 millimeter closed loop radiators. So take all of this with a, a little bit of a grain of salt. And the load line calibration and the voltages and things like that, it really just comes down to a game of thermals and voltage. But you can actually do a lot with this chip without feeding it a ton of voltage. There's a lot of the overclock profiles will by default feed the chip a ton of voltage, and that's sort of a lowest common denominator. But 50% of you will not have to dump that much voltage into the CPU, so it's not going to really be a completely terrible situation as far as heat production goes. So if we look at... oops. Yeah, overclocking. Uh, 5 gigahertz is less stable. Thermals are the main problem. Under ADC is more stable. Uh, it is still a thermal paste situation this time around. There is not solder. Um, so Intel, talking to an Intel engineer about the whole thermal paste versus solder, these CPUs, when they're not doing anything, really sip the power. And so the Intel engineers tell us that uh, because there's not as much thermal cycling, because the CPU is not heating and cooling, um, uh, or the, the, the thermal cycling of the CPU is what makes solder less attractive because cracks will form in the solder. And so they want to use a thermal paste material, but for really insane temperatures, the thermal paste material is not great. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, I'm not a material science engineer, so I can't, you know, argue with that or dispute that except to say that if you can keep the, the CPU temperature under 80 degrees C for normal stuff, it will be perfectly stable, whatever temperature you're, you're running at, pretty much. I mean, whatever clock speed you're running at. So I wouldn't feed it a ton of voltage, though. And we did have liquid coolers, only liquid coolers testing these. So, yeah. So. Uh, they do get very hot. So <laughs> With an AVX, uh, an AVX offset, so the CPU was running at like 4.6, 4.7, we were getting peak voltages of 95 degrees C, but non-AVX workloads, 80, 85, around 5 gigahertz is what we've seen on a sample size of three. So, gonna get more CPUs, gonna do more testing, gonna be a lot of stuff. I think most people, like when you're getting the CPU and you're wanting to overclock it, don't start by feeding it a ton of voltage at first because you can probably just very, very slightly increase, like 0 0.05 increase the voltage and get the stability, especially like if you're only going to go for 4.7 or 4.8, it may not even really need an increase at all. And so with that, the thermals are actually very good, even though it's, you know, solder because the CPU is not getting a ton more voltage than it was, you know, rated for. So, so that raises a question of who wants this, right? Because you have, of course, the AMD options. And you have those incredible i9s, you know, if you want to pay that much money for them. So, obviously, because we talked about, you have to buy a new motherboard. And this is only going to be good for people who are ready to upgrade, right? I mean, if you've got life left and what you've got right now is not super attractive. And one of the things that we did find about this that sort of glows compared to the other options is the low latency that's going on here. It's actually better than X299. Yeah. So one thing we thought about was audio Sweet. processing. Wait, what? Better than X299? Uh, yeah. Six core and X299? Dead. <laughs> so audio. If you're working just with audio, that super low latency is probably really attractive to you. And these are pretty decent prices if you you know have an audio workstation. You want to build with these things. The other thing is budget gaming. This i5 that you can overclock, you can get some really good clock speeds and it performs really well for the price, you know, especially compared to the higher end uh, Ryzen and the, the i9 stuff. It's pretty good performance. 
And what was the most expensive chip? It's like 350 here. Yeah, well, 359 for the i7. Um, it is overclockable. If you're not going to overclock, I mean, if you're building a pro audio workstation, and actually we're going to talk about uh, the the PCI Express layout on the Godlike Gaming, even though that is the most expensive motherboard here, is really good if you're going to add in peripheral uh, cards because it can run by eight by four by four. But we'll talk more about that when we get to it. Um, definitely audio, like low latency audio production is really, is, uh, it, I think people are going to buy those chips up like crazy for that, that workload. On the other hand, video, you probably want to go with more cores. I mean, six cores for video processing, maybe if you're on an extreme budget, but even then some of the AMD options probably comparable. So we can't recommend it for that, but audio for sure, budget gaming. And the other thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure that you're not in a situation where heat is going to bother you a great deal because these things will generate heat. <laughs> if you're going to over overclock it, uh, you know, so you, you may be thinking it's like, okay, six cores, you know, all six cores are created equal. I would rather have the, the six core on this platform than the six core on X299. And the reason for that is the lower latency um, of the platform. So internally, we did a video uh, like last week, the week before, and we were looking at like Sandy Bridge, which is ancient. I mean, that's the Sandy Bridge is five years old. It's five years old CPU, but it uses like internally in the CPU, it's got a very large cache, um, and it also has a, a dual ring bus design. The new i7s on the X299 is a mesh type design, and so that's why we saw performance regressions in um, certain types of workloads, mostly related to gaming, between the i9, the new X299 platform, and the previous platforms. Well, this is still a, a ring bus, an internal ring bus type design versus the new mesh design. So it doesn't, it doesn't have that problem. The problem is the ring bus thing doesn't really scale much past eight cores. Um, so it's problematic past eight cores. But this, in this platform, in the consumer platform, as long as you can keep it fed, now that the DDR4 memory is faster, you'll have an easier time keeping the CPU fed. Six cores is a pretty good balance for this. And I'm, I'm honestly surprised that Intel is not charging more than they are. I mean, to be sure, you're paying a premium. Let's, let's be clear about that. But uh, I'm surprised they're not charging more of a premium for the CPU, considering the performance that you get um, for gaming and other types of workloads that require ultra-low latency. So, we can look at a couple of benchmarks. Cinebench, yeah. So check that out. The 7700K versus the 8700K. It's scaling really well. I mean, if you look at, it's like we added two more cores. We basically got two more cores worth of performance out of this thing. Seems good, Cinebench is, I mean, that's, that's what you would expect, right? So that's good. That means that there's not really a bottleneck from this platform. This, you know, 1151 socket is basically enough connectivity to keep six cores fed between uh, memory and the CPU because Cinebench is memory and CPU heavy. So that's good. We've also got 8 of 64. So yeah, 8 of 64. Uh, the increased memory speeds definitely help a lot. We've got the i7 8700K at 2666. So this is not even really an overclock. This is basically the stock speeds and the i7 uh, at 2400. And so you can see, again, it is scaling as you would expect. It is scaling. There's not really a bottleneck there. It's scaling between the two platforms. It's scaling the way that it should. But We've had a way easier time of getting higher uh, higher memory clocks, even from less expensive Hynix memory on this platform. And the uh, six core CPU does seem to benefit more than the 7700K in terms of the higher memory clocks. It doesn't benefit as much as Ryzen. I mean, on Ryzen, it makes a, a much bigger difference. But in terms of like, I want my game to run at 150 FPS, uh, faster memory helps. In terms of gaming, uh, with just one benchmark here, it's not as extreme, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But because you're going to get the better performance in all the other areas over the uh, 7700K, still probably worth it, uh, again, if you're ready to buy a new motherboard. Rise of the Tomb Raider. So 
Not really. I mean, it's a little faster, but not really as much as we would as we would have expected. It's but, not. It's not something you really notice. And so that may indicate that there's a problem with the uh, the optimization of the game and or drivers or something like that. So what about um, temperature? CPO oh. coolers. This is uh, some data on cooling. Uh, running some of the different testing, A to 64, Cinebench, and at idle. So it is hot. <laughs> it can get quite toasty. So keep the temperatures in mind um, when you're uh, <laughs> when you're considering your cooling solution because you're going to need a fairly significant cooler. So what about uh, we're going to get into the motherboards now, I think. Yep, time to... So we're going to look at these motherboards basically from least to greatest in terms of price. Actually, we couldn't find the price for two of them. They might be able to fill in the details and, and chat there. Uh, but we're going to go like basically the you know the most budget to the most insane, which are the two that are behind us that are actually have... They're running right now. Oh, no, it went to sleep. No, it's not allowed to go to sleep. It went to sleep. Jazz hands. Uh, and we have to actually read the model numbers from these things because I don't remember. <laughs> this is the Z370 PC Pro. Finally, I can use my overhead camera. Maybe. Yeah, look at that. Woo! We switched to the overhead camera. Look, Z370 PC Pro. It's by 16 directly into the CPU. You get two M.2s, legacy PCI slot. This by four slot comes from the chipset, and we got three by one slots. We've got the, I think the Realtek uh, 800 series audio codec, USB 3.1 connectivity, two USB 3.0 Gen 1 connections, one right angle, one straight through, six six gigabit per second SATA ports, uh, eight pin power, uh, four pin fan connectors, a parallel port, and RS-232 serial port if you need that type of connectivity. Uh, this motherboard has it and the legacy PCI, so that's pretty cool. I, I think this is a Thunderbolt header but I'm not sure. This one is $139.99, and I believe it was available on Newegg when I checked. So, yeah. All right, moving right along. Uh, let's see. I believe this would be the SLI Plus. This one, uh, no, Gaming Plus, the Z370 Gaming Plus. Oh, okay. We actually don't know a price on this one, so if our... MSI people in the chat can fill that in. This is really similar to the previous one. It's upgraded um, somewhat. We were, we're down to one uh, M.2 instead of two, and we also uh, shed the legacy PCI expansion slot. The audio solution is slightly upgraded. You got the 7.1 out, but it's still the uh, 800 series uh, Realtek audio codec. You know, built in video out for the onboard iGPU. Still six, uh, six gigabit per second SATA ports. The dual um, USB 3.1 Gen 1, you know, 5 gigabit per second. Still RS-232 and parallel to USB. Similar fan configuration. So this is uh, this is also a, a, a pretty good choice. And now on to the RGB lineup. And everybody's excited about that, right? I don't know if you guys can see it. Okay, there I switched. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, there's RGB lights. So the studio lights may make it somewhat hard to tell, but... Look at that. You've got RGB lighting around the edges. I'm going to try to leave it hooked up here. I don't know how well this is going to work out for me. So this one is the Tomahawk. Yeah, you can kind of see the RGB action going on. So this is uh, Crossfire. Um, so it's 16 PCI Express lanes into the CPU. And then two sets of by four. Yeah, two sets of by four. So it's Crossfire only. No SLI. Yeah. No SLI because of the, the PCI Express routing. So, yeah, RGB 7.1. This is the upgraded uh, Realtek audio codec. Um, two by four slots, three by one, two M.2, six SATA, six gigabit per second. And then you've got your, you know, your four USB 3.1 Gen 1 front panel connections. And also you get the USB type C at the back. So um, you can kind of see that here. On the Z370 Tomahawk. 
We don't know the price. Let me see if the price, if Newegg has that one yet. They do not. So we don't know the price for that. <laughs> soon, TM. Is it, isn't it always a soon, TM? <laughs> All right. There's this one, which we'll see if I can do this without uh, doing something bad. All right. This is the Z370 SLI Plus. We're entering the PCI Express switch territory. This is dual M.2, two armored reinforced PCI Express slots um, here for your graphics cards or whatever other peripherals that you might want to run. So you can do by 16 or by 8x8 from the CPU, then three PCI Express by one through the chipset, another by four through the chipset, two M.2 through the chipset, your front, your four USB 3.1 front panel, six, six gigabit per second SATA ports. Got an upgraded um, voltage regulation situation, uh, a little bit better I.O., on the back as well and also optical SPDIF out so an upgraded audio solution you can see we've got audio boost here so we're talking oh, better I can't see that oops sorry there you go optical SPDIF get our USB um, type C connections or you know HDMI and DVI uh, PS2 combo and you know of course RGB on the back you can see the the RGB sort of when you put this in a case, it makes a nice backlight effect so that you can see the uh, the backlight on the, um, like around your case or whatever your, uh, whatever your case has. And that one's $149.99, which is uh, actually a pretty good value compared to the PC Pro. <laughs> if you're watching this video like uh, sometime after October 5th, 2017, the prices may have fluctuated. So... You know, keep that in mind because there may sure. be. Uh... You can get it right now on Newegg <laughs> for one forty nine ninety nine. So, isn't this just uh, all these lovely, attractive pictures of hardware? I just don't know what to do with myself, isn't it? It's just, oh dear, <laughs> new platform launch. It's it's amazing. <laughs> We're such consumer whores. <laughs> we should also mention this if you're into RGB, and I know all of you are. Uh, they all have this what they call the the mystic light. So the controller that we're going to show you when we go to the live systems, they all have that same thing. That's what's running all these LEDs. Let's see if I can do this without. I only have to do one more, and they're going to let me retire without you know destroying everything. All right. And this is the Z three seventy gaming M five. This one is pretty close to the uh, godlike in terms of like the aesthetic and some of the board features. So if the godlike is like insane overkill for you, which we'll cover in a minute, then this is not, uh, you should look at this motherboard because it's got a lot of, of similar features. So check it out. We've got the RGB on the chipset and the edge lit RGB. We've got a little bit of a shield thing going on here on our um, expansion slots. Same deal with the SLI. You can run by 16 to the CPU or by 8 by 8 to the CPU. Then the other uh, PCI Express connectivity is through the chipset. 2M.2 through the chipset. Uh, the USB 3.1 front panel connectivity has moved a little. It's moved down here. Massively upgraded voltage regulation circuitry. Uh, better cooling. This is all RGB, so it's kind of kind of kind of nuts. Uh, there's a button I can get that one. No, let me just uh, a power cycle here. See if we can get it to. I got it to do something crazy earlier. It was like flashing and doing all kinds of weird stuff, but having a little trouble doing that. I'm not really sure. Sometimes there's like a gaming boost. The rear I.O. That one? No. Rear I.O. is upgraded a little bit more. You've got, you know, your your uh, LAN connection, optical SPDIF. The upgraded Realtek. Uh, audio codec under there. So, pretty exciting. That one is, uh, that was the Gaming M5, right? That's one ninety nine ninety nine. I think the Tomahawk just went live on Newegg. Let's check. Oh. Uh, the 
tomahawk. The, the tomahawk is always is always a really interesting board because it's got uh, all the stuff that you need, but not and but you know, I always, I always think that the tomahawk is always an interesting product to look at. Whatever whatever MSI chooses to call tomahawk. I'm only seeing the Z270 tomahawks. Let me see if I've got a link here. Oh yep, yeah. I don't see it. That's that's weird. I got a link, but there's it's not it's not at the link. I don't know. I don't know. New X fault. They failed us. <laughs> now, did these are these extras? Is this just for the Godlike Gaming, or did I, some of the other ones have these? That is just for the Godlike Gaming, as far as I know. So we, then we've got the two systems behind us: the Godlike Gaming, this one here that's got the like the Night uh, Night Rider marquee. Sweep thing, yeah, that's the godlike gaming. And then we've got the Pro Carbon AC Z370 over there. This is running the i5, that's running the i7. <laughs> and that's pretty much the Coffee Lake launch in a nutshell, but we need to actually like do some fun and interesting stuff with the systems now. Now the Godlike Gaming, uh, it really is like that's sort of the one that they threw everything at. It has features that none of the other ones do, and it's also quite a bit more than all the other ones at four ninety nine ninety nine. But it, clearly, they wanted to just load everything they could into this motherboard. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but there's we're doing the whole YouTube multi camera thing, so there's another camera you can hit, and you'll actually see this system's output. Uh, if you don't want to watch it on the on the TV, so oh, it's making noise. Probably shouldn't be making noise. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about, are you going to do the Godlike Gaming first? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So we've got the i7-8700K that we talked about earlier in this machine, the Godlike Gaming motherboard, G-Skill Trident Z DDR3600 RAM, uh, OCZ RD400 NVMe, a Corsair H1150i or L115i for the cooling. Like we said, we have only liquid cooled these. We did not try any sort of fan cooling. They're very warm. Uh, Thermaltake 650 power supply and a GTX 1080 Ti. So that is what you're looking at right now on the TV. RGB memory. Who knew? Uh, oh, will you have me the box? I got to show you something completely insane. All right. We're going to try to to do this here. All right, so here's the box. This is the rear I.O. So you can see there's three gigabit NICs on this. They're all killer NICs. Uh, and I'm gonna actually, I've got an Intel NIC on the table. And if we add the Intel NIC to the system, it will actually slow things down. So yeah, three Intel NICs, uh, five M.2, there's three on board. And then it comes with this expansion card, which will give, it'll use by eight and give you two M.2. And this is through the CPU, so it won't bottleneck. So that, that bottleneck problem that I was telling you about where if you actually like put three Samsung 960 Pros on this motherboard, it's going to bottleneck because all of these run through the PCH. But if you use this with your two Samsung 960 Pros, this does not bottleneck because it goes directly into the CPU. If you use this, it'll mean that your graphics card is going to run it by eight. But this will not bottleneck because this is I.O. directly into the CPU. Um, the... Set up here with the three gigabit NICs. We've got all three of those plugged in to our network. You've also got the wireless solution here. The Killer Extend wireless solution can actually act as a wireless repeater. Um, 
so you can you can literally use the killer software on Windows as your router if you want to to do packet prioritization and, and that kind of thing using that as my router me personally I don't know if I would go for that but I decided to give this software a run for its money because it's like all right I want to see how well this actually does so let me show you how well this actually does now while he's setting that up you get your little uh M.2 heat shields on everything on this one. I think one of these boards only has one, but you get everything for this one. And you also get these uh, backplate magnetic covers that are different colors if color coordination is critical to your PC build. Uh, you get an RGB strip, which you can actually see across the front of that thing. That comes with it, so you can add even more. Um, not enough RGB in your life, you get one for free. And maybe the most important thing you get, what are these, right? They look like little crab claws. What use could they have? Well, these are actually your wireless antennas. So if you're running wireless, everybody's going to know how extreme you are because you got these little crab claw, crab claw wireless antennas and you get two of those because there's two wireless in that thing. I would just like to point out that uh, like if for those of you guys that are watching the B-roll camera, you've already seen this, but yeah, I just copied a file, a, like a nine gig file off of the network at about 300 megabytes per second on average, which is completely nuts. Now, did you talk about the uh, express problems that we ran into though? We need, we should address those. Now this is, this is an Intel problem. <laughs> All right. So we can't really blame MSI for this, but because of the, PCI limitations of the CPUs. If you're using one of the M.2 slots, all of a sudden one of your NICs is gone. Like yeah. what, why do we only have two NICs? So on the initial setup, we put the M.2 in the very bottom slot, the very bottom M.2 because hey, that's gonna be the best airflow, right? Well, when you do that, it will actually disable one of the onboard NICs and it'll also disable the very bottom expansion slot. So even though the Z370 chipset has upgraded PCI Express connectivity, this motherboard is so loaded with onboard peripherals that if you use a ton of add-in peripherals, you're not going to be able to use the bottom slot. But it's just the bottom slot. So you still have three other by 16 slots, and those three other by 16 slots are into the CPU. And so if you use all three of them, you'll get by 16 by 4 by 4, which is actually if you're doing, you know, video production, if you've got, you know, PCI Express 3.0 capture cards having your graphics card at pci express by eight or i mean that your graphic yeah your, your main graphics card at pci express by eight and then two 4k 60 fps capture cards at pci express by four directly into the cpu that's basically okay and if you don't use the bottom m.2 you still got another pci express by four through the bottom slot you can use either one of the other two expansion slots so just keep that in mind that if you're going to fully populate this system you will lose the one onboard nick um, and that's just because of the PCH connectivity limitations from Intel. The, the, I don't know if you mentioned this, but the extender will also turn off one of the other PCI Express lanes. So if you're thinking that you're going to get this and just put everything you've got into it, keep those things in mind. Also, uh, did you talk about the U.2? Oh, yeah, there's a front U.2 as well. So if you need U.2 connectivity, there's a front U.2 connector that also uses the same PCI Express lanes as the very bottom M.2. All right, so you will lose some things if you plug in the U.2. So, hey, it's a give and take, but again, that's Intel, that's not MSI. <laughs> uh, also, the did you talk about the upgraded audio on this one? This has dual Realtek ALC1220. Yes, two ALC1220 implementations. And it does have the bigger uh, headphone jack. Quarter inch headphone jack. So if you got some high dollar headphones, <laughs> you, don't have, you don't want to adapt it down, you can plug straight into the board. Saber Audio DAX. So it, they went completely overkill, just completely and utterly ridiculously overkill, which is good, I think. <laughs> and uh, front USB-C, did you talk about that? Uh, yeah, there's a front USB-C connector. This is the only one of this lineup that has front USB-C. So neat. But you've also got the, the rear USB 3.1 Gen 2 um, at the back, 10 gigabit per second. But yeah, did you, did you guys see the... The 300 megabytes plus cocking it over the network. Let me see if I can drag it over and blow it up or zoom in or whatever. And yes, we realize that you cannot hear us if you're watching the uh, the B stream. So just keep them both open so you can you can listen to us in the background. 
284 megabytes per second at, at the time it completed. But look, it was it was higher and lower and. Yeah, our network storage array, if you didn't see the video on that, it's made out of spinning rust. So that's pretty good for spinning rust. <laughs> so that's the Godlike Gaming. And it, you know, that is, that's the most you're going to get, which is a lot. Let's run a GTA 5 benchmark because why not? Maybe. Oh, it wants to redo the thing. That's fine. All right. Switch over to the other machine. The Pro Carbon AC. So this machine is the i5-8600K, the same G-Skill Trident Z DDR3600 RAM. Uh, this is an, actually an Intel Optane 500 gigabyte hard drive. So... <laughs> oh yeah, we're gluttons for punishment. I forgot about the Optane thing. Yeah, uh, NZXT X41 for the cooling and the Corsair 750 for the power supply. And this is just a plain old 1080, not a 1080 Ti. So, yeah, we're using a 16 gig Optane. Like, how crazy are we? Now, <laughs> now this motherboard, uh, uh, I forgot the price of this one. This one is considerably cheaper. I think this one might be, let me look it up real quick. Let's run uh, benchmark. So this one's 209. So, you know, compared to the 499, this is the 209. So you're not getting the, uh, the NIC set up. This is just one NIC and it's Intel. You uh, get an audio boost, but it's not the same kind of audio that the killer or Godlike Gaming has. It's SLI or Crossfire, but not you know as much PCI Express connectivity there. And uh, no USB-C on the front panel and fewer M.2. But you do have USB-C at the back. I think. I'm yes, sure. I'm pretty sure you do. Still get your wireless and you still get your mystic lighting rgb which i again i can tell by the chat's reaction is what you all really care about there's a party mode in the new version of mystic light so get this the software they're, they're revamping the software it's not quite there yet but there's a party mode in mystic light so if you and your friends all have msi motherboards you can synchronize the rgb lighting effects between multiple computers on your LAN. That's something. <laughs> <laughs> it is a thing. Now, th this uh, the RGB controller is actually uh, how many different? Uh, there's like fifty options in there. Yeah. For the the, the zones. Yeah. And it was actually uh, we we played with it for a while and had trouble figuring out what we're doing. It's if you are if you want to micromanage your RGB if that's your thing, then these are the boards for you. The software is also, I mean, you know, normally RGB software, uh, I'm a little far away, so I probably don't sound that great, but um, normally RGB software is not really like super polished, but they've actually done a better job than most of the stuff that I've seen as far as RGB stuff goes, because, you know, that software is being rewritten every other month, pretty much, and it, it worked pretty well. There was some, there was some, definitely some quirks in the user interface, and I couldn't get party mode to work quite right, but... Um, it's really interesting stuff. Yeah. I think maybe some of the price of that uh, Godlike Gaming was R&D budget for what they spent <laughs> working on this <laughs> RGB controller. Uh, what is the monitor? The monitor behind us is a, was that a 52 inch? 55 inch crossover from Korea. It's a Korean monitor. It's very nice and affordable. Uh, on our B-roll camera or on our B-roll thing getting ready to run uh, benchmarks. Oh, no. Let me change my settings again. This thing is off. This is all. My vertex versions are all.
Why not RGB boxes? Well, you may have given them a, an idea for the next generation. Hey, I'm already living in the future. I've got the sweeper from Knight Rider on the front of my test bench computer. I, I'm set. I mean, it's like all I need to do now is to say, you know, good morning, Michael, from the uh, from the speaker on board or something, and I'll be all set. I think I'd go for the rockets if I were choosing <laughs> Knight Rider options to add to a motherboard. How about the, how about the ability to turbo boost? <laughs> I guess they kind of have that. <laughs> yeah, they definitely actually do. There's a, there's a knob that goes up to 11. Have you guys seen Spinal Tap that goes up to 11? If you had to make a choice, which motherboard to go with in the next 10 minutes, which would it be? Well, what's your budget? I mean, the Godlike Gaming is pretty amazing. It does a lot of cool stuff. Having all, if you have the, the network to support it, having all three of those NICs plugged in at the same time is pretty cool. Being able to basically run it as a router or, you know, a, a wireless router, even if you wanted to. Or a standard. Uh, That's like if you've got an existing wireless network, you can... Yeah, if you're in a dorm or something like that. Of course, now if you're in college, <laughs> paying 500 for a motherboard. Yeah. <laughs> so, money, no object. Of course, you'd go with the Godlike Gaming. If you are on a budget, I think uh, the Pro Carbon AC might be the sweet spot because it is... It cuts away what some people might consider most of the fat from that one, but gives you a lot of the options. And uh, I can't, I've already forgotten what I said the price for that one was two oh nine. All right, our B-roll GTA Five benchmark is running. Now, if we get stutters in the benchmark, it's because the computer is so fast the GTA Five can't keep up, and I can prove it by uh, downloading a thing to tune the frame rate to be hard limited at like one hundred and sixty FPS, and then it won't stutter. We, uh, again, gaming on these, uh, especially the i7, we had really good experiences with it. And uh, we were using uh, mostly these 1080s. So, but I think the AMD cards did fine as well. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of surprising. And I, I th you know, like the whole 7700K is the king of gaming. I, not, not anymore. Yeah, it's not true anymore. <laughs> All you people that have been <laughs> clinging to your 7700Ks just so you could say that, well, Maybe time to upgrade. Now, I think one of the more interesting parts this time around is the i5s. Because we've got six cores on the i5 at this point. It's six cores, six threads. But if you look at like the performance per dollar, especially in these games, the i5 has almost identical performance. And I think up to this point, it's because a lot of like, okay, eight months ago, KB Lake came out. Ryzen was not a thing. Most game companies optimized for the four cores that has been the standard since time immemorial. Um, and now we're, we're in a situation where we've got six cores. You know, PUBG just published their patch, which optimizes for six cores and beyond to improve performance of, of higher-end CPUs because they've got some optimization problems. So six cores is basically the norm, or is getting to be the norm now, but there's no penalty. So like when you move to the new platform, there's no backward compatibility penalty. So if gaming performance is all you're interested in and maximum gaming performance is, is all you're interested in, you're paying a premium, but this is the fastest thing that you can get. The surprising thing is that there's not that much of a difference right now between the i5 and the i7, especially if you can get them to comparable clock speeds. That's more of an overclock for the i5 than the i7, but even the i5K part, the stock speeds are pretty close to the i7 stock speeds six cores is the new four cores what can i say <laughs> yeah look at this it's like 180 190 fps in gta it's completely insane completely completely nuts now if you watch really carefully you'll see that the gta 5 engine actually breaks at those really high fps uh, values. See, it sort of stutters for a second there. If we artificially limit the frame rate, it will actually not do that. There are also a couple of features that we did not get time to get working. Uh, and again, I know you, all of you are going to be super excited about this because it's so useful in the real world. Uh, apparently, these RGBs will change with your health level in certain games. I think, was it uh, one of the MOBAs? Dota 2. Or was it uh, the Blizzard one? 
Oh, uh, Mark will have to help me out with this one. Uh, I, th I think uh, I can't remember. That one of those would probably be a good demo. But uh, yeah, that's just another part of this. Uh, what do they call it? Mystic Light. The RGB stuff is really advanced in these motherboards. If that's your thing. Yeah, it's really. <laughs> It's like, we want to change the lighting behind the TV. See, we get the nice purple. So when I get low on health, I want it to flash. Okay, totally works. <laughs> Isn't that completely nuts? Let's see if I can do... So the second nail in the coffin to the quads on X299. I mean, yeah. if you're willing to buy the new motherboard, <laughs> there's no reason. I mean, in terms of you're buying something new, you're buying a new board and a new processor, no reason I've not often, to get this. I've often wondered if the like if the sales goal of the quad core or CPUs on X299 literally is to just have somebody count on buying another CPU for that socket later so they don't have to upgrade their motherboard. Like is that is that is that what that was designed for? I mean, really? Because this is a much smarter buy. I mean, much smarter. Now, if you're doing anything that needs more cores, you probably need a platform that needs more cores. But there's a trade-off because a platform that can properly feed lots of cores is going to have a little bit higher inherent latency. The other nice thing I like about both, both of these motherboards, there's something called deferred procedure call latency. Uh, both of these motherboards and their bundled software comes with a DPC latency tuner. So you can actually mess with the DPC latency and tune it down a little bit more even than it is and at least keep an eye on what the deferred procedure call latency is, which can be a, a hidden factor in limiting your game performance. Uh, someone asked about other games. Uh, you saw the rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark, and uh, <laughs> what do you want to run? We got Steam, but we didn't see huge differences. Uh, the comparison was always with the seventy seven hundred K. In gaming, they were pretty close, so I don't think there's anything too terribly surprising here. Yeah, it's you can you can have the the performance of a seventy seven hundred K but six cores to do other stuff. And some games like Battlegrounds will use, have already been optimized to use more cores. Not every game is like that, as we saw with Tomb Raider. Did you just say Battlegrounds was optimized? <laughs> that hurts our credibility. <laughs> so we got two full systems set up here. What do you guys want to see? What, what do you want us to do? Um, I'm going to download Rebatuner and show how we can we can actually make uh, GTA 5 perform better by limiting the FPS. If I can find it. Modded Minecraft we did not test. I'm sorry. Train Sim World. Train Simulator 5000. <laughs> I'm afraid we don't have these games. How does Doom run? It? Doom runs well on everything. That's not a good test. You, you already know how the CPU is going to perform because there existed six core CPUs with a similar cache architecture, but on a different socket. It was previously like the six core x99 cpus but nowhere near these clocks so ramp up the clocks mess with the cache a little bit add some more advanced features like avx and bam you got that on a new socket you don't need quad channel anymore because the ddr4 memory clock speed is finally getting up there to the point that two sticks of memory can feed the cpu like four sticks used to be able to and that's why memory speed really didn't matter all that much in quad channel on intel side because it was overfeeding the cpu anyway the quad channel was really meant for you know higher core count cpus and six is not it's 50% more than four, but in terms of like, can two sticks of DDR4 running at 3,000 keep, uh, keep those CPUs completely fed? And the answer is yes. How many cats per second? That's more of a GPU problem. So uh, CPU doesn't really factor into that quite as much. Make Christmas decorations with RGB. Now, 
I don't know if MSI has any plans for this, but they could use the party mode <laughs> to attach your Internet of Things Christmas tree. An Internet of Things party mode device? <laughs> <laughs> you could connect all of your MSI ornaments. I could build that. The, if they'll open source the protocol, I feel like that would work. Oh, it, I'm sure we could do it. I'm also sure we shouldn't. <laughs> it's like the, the whole Jurassic Park thing. Is that what we got going on? And it's like, well, we didn't. We were concerned with whether or not we could. We didn't stop to think we should. IOMMU situation. It's, this is basically the same as the other Intel stuff, right? Yeah. So I tested the IOMMU situation, and on the uh, SLI Plus, I haven't done the Godlike yet, but the SLI Plus, the IOMMU situation was good, except for the lanes from the CPU. Everything from the CPU is in one group. So even though the motherboard is awesome because you can run by eight by four by four with CPU lanes, they're all in one group. But everything else is in its own group, which is nice. So if you're gonna run one GPU and use the iGPU, you're okay. But if you're gonna run two GPUs, they're in the same item and you groups not gonna work. Desari gave us twenty dollars and he says, Thanks for doing this. Can it run Linux? It can run Linux. <laughs> Thank you. What's your stance on the killer network over Intel? As you saw, I mean normally you want Intel, right? But it actually is really fast with uh all three of them running. I did the experiment. So this is the Intel Gigabit desktop adapter. I put the Intel Gigabit desktop adapter in there when we couldn't figure out why one of our killer NICs wasn't working. And it actually slowed everything down. The killer NICs uh, adhere to all of the modern standards for message signaled interrupts and all of the stuff that you need to do that. And so the CPU utilization with this multi-channel SMB stuff was actually lower with the killer NICs, which I was not expecting. And that actually melted my brain a little bit. I don't know if the driver is doing something, you know, like behind my back to make it seem like the CPU utilization is lower. I don't really know what's going on. But on the B stream earlier, literally getting over 300 megabytes per second, which is basically perfect utilization of all three um, of, our, uh, of our killer NICs copying from our network server, which has a 10 gig connection. So we basically saturated all three connections on this thing. But you do have to keep in mind that because of the PCI situation, in certain configurations, neither your PCI Intel NIC nor one of the killer NICs will work. So you gotta keep that in mind if you're thinking about loading up a, a bunch of stuff in these things. These are the only boxes we have to show off. Yeah, we got two boxes. <laughs> these are, uh, I was gonna test Linux on all of these, but um, these are just not quite, they're like early prototypes. So it was not exactly safe to, to like actually throw a CPU in there. We got, uh, you got color coordinated cables that come with these things. Um, of course your usual cable management stuff. Already talked about the shields. I can't talk enough about these crab claw. I don't know if you can see those very well. <laughs> those are the wireless antennas. Crab here. claw. I mean, look how extreme these things are. Switch angles. There we go. All right. Look at that thing. That's a wireless antenna. It's you can't see it's black on black. Look at that guy. <laughs> your MSI. friends are gonna yeah. Your friends are gonna come over and they're gonna be like, "What is this?" I feel like MSI could have, instead of spending the extra three cents on the plastic, putting the antenna on the end of a wire. Because those those antennas are fixed <laughs> antennas. They're going to be at the back of your computer. But having a movable antenna, eh, maybe it would be a little bit better. I want to eat Chinese food with these. 
I didn't pretend to be a crab. It's a two by two uh, wireless solution, so 866 megabit dual dual band. You know, you got the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So, it's exciting. I want, really want to get this uh, thing installed so we can do some more more gaming stuff. Oh, I think we missed a donation here. Oh, okay. Uh, Aliandros, I recognize that name. I've sent you a metric ton of candy. Yes. Can you please do more in-depth tutorial of firewall rules, routes, and DNS on OPN sense? Uh, did we, we released all those videos that we did, did we? we? Uh, six, yeah. There are six PF sense videos in total. So yeah, we might revisit that. That was $200, by the way. Jesus. Oh, wait, no, that was 200 uh, Norwegian kroner. Well, thank you. I don't know what that translates Candy's to. Candy's also good. Now, that was the... It was the fancy candy. No, it was the Norwegian. That was the Dundersal, right? Yeah, well, but the other candy was fancy. So, some of you people are not familiar with our Twitch channel. <laughs> this gentleman sent us something called Dundersal. <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, they sell them on Amazon. I would highly recommend that you buy some. Not because they're delicious, but because it's one of the most horrific things that you can ever taste. <laughs> and, uh, you know, seed a bowl of M&Ms with those things and give them to your enemies. You thought it was North Korean dollars? <laughs> I don't know if we have any North Korean viewers. Something tells me we don't. Thunder salt is awesome. Uh, we love our salt here in Scandinavia. Yeah, a lot of there was a lot of salt-based candies in that, and uh, we were, I guess, we're too American to understand or appreciate those. What do they taste like? Uh, salt and sadness. Uh, oh, did you talk about this? Uh, the God, the Godlike Gaming comes with this. Uh, USB extension device. If you need, it has a ton of you. How much, how much total USB did it have? Uh, there's 10 ports on the back, plus six on board, plus you get the USB hub, plus the front panel connections, plus the front panel USB Type C. It's got you covered. On so yeah, but if if you need even more, you got this hub, which will give you uh, five more. I think one, three, and four twos. So the really the Godlike Gaming is all about just drowning you in connectivity and uh is that the intel nick over there uh, yeah. Okay. yeah yeah this one yeah let's see that uh that box there this is the uh the carbon has the uh more traditional you might argue <laughs> more useful and realistic wireless antennas and it has the uh, color-coordinated backplate, but not the stickers. And that's SLI. So definitely not as many bells and whistles, but that's what you get with that. What number is a uh, regular cam? Two. I didn't know. Because I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we need. It's like FPS frame rate limiter off. Can't quite see this because it's. Is it on? Oops. So, yeah, we played around uh, a lot with the RGB thing. It's surprisingly complex and deep. Um, 
It does have the party mode. I'm not sure. I think maybe our motherboards were, uh, you know, some samples and they didn't quite work. It could find the other one, but it wouldn't put the other one into party mode. Uh, but if you are, I'm trying to think of a, a scenario where you would want party mode. Maybe if you have children and you, you want to communicate to them that it's time to go to bed by changing the RGB on their PC in their bedroom. Uh, you don't actually want to interact with them. That could be one way that you could do that. Uh, maybe if you got a roommate who you don't like and you don't really want to actually speak to ever, you could come up with codes that you use the RGB to let them know like if there's a fire or an active shooter or something like that. Uh, So I've got the NVIDIA Profile Inspector installed, and it's so fast, I'm limiting the FPS to only 160. <laughs> and we will rerun the benchmark. Do you envision any security issues in the future with RGB and leaking data? Actually, we've already covered this. There, there are people who have created uh, different firmware for switches. So if they overwrite the firmware on your switch, the switch can exfiltrate data. This is a Phillips problem. By the uh, blinking lights. So someone is observing your switch. They, as Based on every how many lights it has, they can, that many bits, they can pull out of data. Also, the uh, hard drive light indicator. Some people have done things with that to sort of exfiltrate what's going on with the PC. Now, fun fact. 3Com 10 megabit Ethernet switches. So, yeah, really old. 3Com 10 megabit Ethernet switches, you could exfiltrate data by reading the LEDs. And that was a feature, not a bug. So, yeah. I mean, with the the amount of RGB on this godlike gaming, <laughs> so many bits. You could get so many bits at once. So, if that's your, if that's your goal, that's another board for you. Paying attention to chat again, sort of, kind of. Woo! All right. Oh, I accidentally turned V-Sync on, apparently. <laughs> well, it's going to be mega smooth. The GTA 5 engine was never designed for these kinds of FPS, or the, the 150 plus FPS. When GTA 5 was written, they just never assumed that it would work. That also says something about how long they thought people would be playing the game. <laughs> it's also the year they invented microtransactions, so <laughs> oh, it's up there like 112 there. I mean, that's not terrible. Should make PCs that talk to each other through RGB? Well, that's not exactly what these are doing, but they can share their RGB setups over the network, if that's what you want. Stop drinking soft drinks. It's bad for you. I'm drinking water, sir. <laughs> He's probably talking to me. Delicious Nestle water. I haven't had any sleep for several days, so I can have a banana instead. Is Coffee Lake a good upgrade from Sandy Bridge? Do you want a new motherboard? If you are only playing games and you insist on the highest FPS possible. I assume some of you are just arriving. So what we talked about earlier, uh, the, the real situations where this CPU set shines, at least the ones we've tested, is gaming where you are on a budget and you want, uh, compared to the 7700K, this one is actually a little bit better for gaming, but it also has your six cores so it can do other things. Uh, and also because this platform has really low latency, anything that you need really low latency for, audio was one of the things that we thought of, then totally worth it to get to this. The most badass Macintosh the world has ever seen. <laughs> 
I didn't say that. Sad. <laughs> Don't actually do that. Apple doesn't like that. Do you guys like potatoes? I do. Yeah, potatoes are good. Who doesn't like potatoes? You can make a potato that like, tastes like anything. Is that a, is, are you joking about Dimitri liking potatoes? Is that what that is? Is Coffee Lake best caffeinated or decaf? Do you think, is that the K models versus the non-K models? <laughs> I'd always go with the overclock. Yeah, uh, well, the, the i5 non-K, I mean, if you could save a few bucks on the motherboard, not getting the Z-series chipset, which is impossible right now, the non-overclockable i5 is a really, really good deal in terms of, like, how much compute you get and how fast it is. I mean, it's, like, it's, oh, it's way over 4 gigahertz for its built-in boost. So, and the non-K, I mean, the K i5 and i7, even though it's, like, the one core speed is 4.7 gigahertz, basically all the cores will work at 4.7 gigahertz as long as your cooling is okay. Do these have any safety features to prevent damage during builds? Uh, Not really. I know. I think these are pretty standard in terms of that. Uh, if you are having those problems, probably just slow down a little bit, you know? Uh, step back on whatever stimulus that you're <laughs> consuming. Uh, you know, pretty basic. Pretty basic uh, safety <laughs> motherboard safety features. Now, if you think people hate RGB... Start introducing motherboard safety features and you will get some real salt. I suppose another way to say that would be get good. Can't hear a window when he's looking at the screen. Yeah, you might ought to haul your mic over there. Are Coffee Lake chips and 300 series main boards available in substantial quantities worldwide? Okay, so for the MSI boards, we found all but two were available on Newegg right now. That's where we got the prices from. The CPUs, I don't think you can get them anywhere today. I think they are on the way. You can probably pre-order them. I don't. <sighs> Banana time. So uh, it's not, I think that, um... On Newegg, it was saying that the orders would be filled in the next 7 to 10 days, and then it was like 10 to 14 days, and then it just says back order now. But I think there's a container ship on its way full of CPUs. So the way that companies usually do it is they send a small quantity via air shipment, because air shipment is crazy expensive, and then the, the, the bulk of everything is sent via container ship. So there's a container ship full of Intel CPUs somewhere, probably, somewhere in the ocean that is on its way to wherever. Don't get any ideas, Somali pirates. <laughs> Question, when Intel launches eight cores, will we need to buy yet another motherboard? Well, you can get eight core Intel. Not on this motherboard. But uh, I don't, they do have a plan for another generation on these, right? Uh, Intel doesn't guarantee anything. See, here's the thing. The plans that Intel had seem to have been disrupted somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something in the industry happened that made them all of a sudden rush out a bunch of stuff and try really hard again. Like, I don't know what that would have been, but uh, it's hard to predict because suddenly they have to compete. So, who knows? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just over here struggling with my, uh, my, little, my, my little setup here. Can we do an office tour? We're going to do an office tour, but we're going to do it as a video. Uh, most of the office is empty right now because we've moved the, the desk in front of the bench, so we're all pushed into one corner right now. <laughs> I think I got it set for 120 FPS. We'll see. Eighty seven hundred K or seventeen hundred X. Oh, we talked about that before. You know, it's it depends on what you want to do with it. 
if you want if you if you are doing things that can use the core count then yes the core count is good that's well it, the the mind blowing thing here is that between the IPC differences and the other performance the 8 core AMD is almost is very close is on par with the 6 core Intel um, at stock speeds so you know with a mild overclock on both of them you can move the thing in either direction but in terms of like legacy software comp compatibility and things like gaming f 6 faster cores is better than 8 slower cores but for video production and things like that more cores is probably better we need a TLDR for uh, people that just joined. Coffee Lake CPUs are out, and you can probably pre-order them today. You might wait a week to get them. We've talked about them. We have the two K versions, the i5 and the i7, running behind us here. We're doing things to test them. Everything you see on the desk here is the MSI motherboard lineup with the two behind us, also MSI motherboards, and we talked about them. The, the, the Coffee Lake CPUs are insanely fast. They run hot, but they don't drink the power. Uh, they will run hotter than, like if you just roll with the defaults, they'll run hotter than they really need to. They're actually quite stable with not insane voltages. Is that a real brick wall? It is. From the... Uh, what, 1890s? Late 19th century, yeah. And... They were locally fired. We sealed it. We sealed it with paintbrushes. And they're basically disintegrating. So imagine trying to paint sand <laughs> with a paintbrush. For days we did that. And it was terrible. But look how nice it is now. We put in so much work in this room for you guys, you have no idea. I mean, it was... It was it was a bit therapeutic there for a while because it was like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to paint my brick. It's going to be fine. I'm going to, you know, just sort of rocking back and forth doing the Rain Man thing. Yeah, it turned out okay, though. When will the 8th gen processors be available in the Indian market? <laughs> I cannot answer that question. I don't know what the lag time. Do you have any idea what the lag time usually is? I'm sure it'll be soon. Mark might know if he's paying attention. Mark, you got any idea what the lag time for that is? Pay attention in the chat because he's in the chat. He's a mod. No, I didn't get the FPS right. It's still 60. Or I didn't click apply or something. How is the standing desk doing? It's doing fantastic. You might not notice, but this is actually a little bit different height. We have this matching the height of the workbench for this thing. During the news, we will take it down further. And during product videos, we'll raise it a little bit higher. So, great investment. Thanks, patrons. Who should upgrade to this platform? <laughs> I will repeat it since otherwise we will have dead air. <laughs> <laughs> you should upgrade to this platform if you are looking for a, you don't want to spend the money on the, you know, the more powerful Intel CPUs. Of course, I mean, we've talked about that. Uh, what's the, the highest end i9's product number? It's like 7960XE or something. It's $2,000. Two grand. 2300 $2, So you So your options go up to $2,300. And clearly, some people aren't going to do that. So if, but the other thing that you have to keep, like think about uh, upgrading the motherboard because you have to buy a new motherboard with this launch. And so if you're ready for a new motherboard, which might also mean new memory. And uh, also we should talk about liquid cooling because you probably want a really good cooling solution with this. So if you're, if you're looking, if you say, yes, I want a new motherboard. Yes, I'm ready for liquid cooling. Then probably that's who is looking at buying these things. Uh, decent gaming, 
You know, obviously it's not going to compete with those better ones, but really good gaming performance if you put a decent video card with it and super low latency use cases. And the only one we were able to think of was audio. I'm sure there is other low latency use cases that you can tell us about. Should I buy a rundown Toyota Corolla or a new Intel chip? Well, the Intel chip cannot transport a family of four. So <laughs> there's that. But the Corolla can't uh, can't process video, can't render video. So uh, you're going to have to make your own call there. I'm sorry. Is it good for mining? I don't, are any cryptocurrencies, I guess the, you, they've got the JavaScript miners, if you want to do it that way. I don't think you get much out of that. I would not buy a CPU for mining. How do you deal with us dumbasses? Eh. We love you guys. <clears throat> we are also dumbasses. We just happen to be sitting in front of a camera. So <laughs> got to keep that in mind. You're just a couple of bozos on the internet. Having some fun. Play with some technology. That's what's exciting. It's like you go to work and it's like nobody else is enthusiastic. And it's like, aren't you guys excited for the Coffee Lake launch? And everybody's like, I just want to end this hell on earth. Why is this so terrible? Any word on smaller form factor boards from MSI? Uh, again, MSI's in the chat. They can answer that. We don't know. What's more efficient at space heating? I think this one might take the cookie for that. Well, there was a, a news story we did about a Parisian company that was put, they were using Ryzen and putting them in people's homes to heat the homes which seemed kind of weird, but I think they, they went too early because they could, they were doing uh, like, you know, should have gone for the I-9s. <laughs> they were using the uh, distributed computing. So they were using the horsepower, but letting these people's homes get heated. And if they would have just waited, you know, to get these or yeah, like the I-9s probably would have been better. I would, I would say give it a week or so and see if the stock stabilizes. Um, the, if it's the container ship thing is probably one to two weeks out maybe three weeks, something like that. But, you know, the boards are in stock right now today at Newegg. I don't think you're going to have to wait very long to get the CPUs. So there's a lot of people that are still running five-year-old machines that are like, okay, I mean, a five-year-old five machine is great. I'm ready for an upgrade because I want the new platform features. I want the high-performance M.2. I want 150 FPS in GTA 5, you know, whatever. So a lot of, 2017 is the year of options. Will it make your coffee taste better? Well, maybe if you have a smug satisfaction of having a faster gaming CPU than 7700K, then yes, it might take a little bit of the bitterness out of your coffee. The, let's, let's not, you know, there, there's no equivocation here. The 8700K at stock speeds is the fastest gaming CPU on planet Earth, period. How do you cope with the fact that we're just specks floating in the vague nothingness of space and the realization that nothing matters? Here's the thing. All right, let me let me respond to that. Again, we until whatever's going on behind me fires up, we got nothing to do but kill time, so I'll tell you all about that. If I were living in a simulation, which you're talking about there, what would change about my life? And the answer is nothing. Because, I, you know, it's all about just not being miserable, doing what little things you can to get those endorphins to fire off in your brain and reduce your suffering. And if I was living in a simulation and I knew it, it wouldn't change anything. So if you think about it like that, you can keep trucking along. A better question, a better question for you might be, does anything really exist other than information? Oh, 
who can drink a lake of coffee? I don't know. And it would definitely be bad for the uh, aquatic life in said lake. So it's actually a pretty dark picture if you look too deeply into it, which you shouldn't. You should really just focus on the uh, multi-threaded performance and uh, the budget gaming that you can get out of it, things of that nature. The low latency, just focus on those things. I'm going to reboot just for giggles. <laughs> Uh, I really think Intel missed the boat on having something named Timberlake. I did see a lot of Thunderbolt headers on these boards, so I'm not sure what the specific plans for Thunderbolt are, but Thunderbolt support uh, is coming. I think I read in one of the Intel slides that there's another updated chipset coming that supports Thunderbolt. So I didn't actually get sent the slide deck. I don't think that's under NDA. Uh, that's just something I found on the internet. So it may or may not be accurate. When will Intel finally put RGB directly on the processor die? Can you imagine they would make that choice to add that heat just to give us <laughs> RGB? That might be some sort of terrible tipping point. I don't know, like, what the world looks like after that, but it's different and it's it's dark. Oh, I see some PUBG being launched. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, we were going to have Krista here to uh, do some things in the background, do some gaming and stuff, but unfortunately, she's under the weather. So, part of the dead air is that we're down a person. So, you have to give us a little bit of a break. You don't have to, but you'd be a better person if you did. Wish I could buy high-end main boards without gamer gimmicks. Eh, you can turn them off. What? Listen, if you hate RGB, one of the settings in this uh, Myst what they got? Myst Mystic, Lights. Mystic Lights package is off. So turn them off. Get rid of them if you want. I mean, they'll still be there, and that might, you know, on a, a mental level, it might bother you, but you won't have to see them. How much have I missed? Basically everything. Yeah, beat my, my FPS in Battlegrounds now. Woo! What will it take to get hardware manufacturers to not put RGB on hardware? Uh, I don't think that's realistic. Uh, oh, Chris is in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> get back to bed. <laughs> So, you know, we joke about the RGB, but the sad reality is people seem to like it. I mean, they wouldn't put it there if nobody was buying it. So people are buying it. You know, it's just just one of those things. That's like, uh, it's like Nickelback, you know? <laughs> Everybody claims to hate Nickelback, but they're selling a lot of records. So uh, people, some people do like it. What are the PDA things in the frame box on the wall? Those were early uh, computers. That well, They ran like a, a Windows CE or something, right? DOS, Linux, Windows CE. So those, when we were in college, there were no smartphones. And uh, PDAs were, uh, you know, not something that you could type on easily. How do, did they even have soft keyboards in PDAs back then? No. So that was, if you wanted a little travel computer, that's what you got. And uh, they had uh, network cards you could plug into them. They had infrared. You could like sync with infrared. At least one of those did. And uh, basically just a, a little mini computer. <laughs> PUBG is being as usual completely terrible unoptimized cell.
how is the Linux path through gone? We we already talked about that. Uh, these are not like these are sample motherboards, and so I don't think that we can fully test that until we get like an actual production one. Yeah, the onboard peripherals are grouped in individual groups, but the so on most of the the motherboards that support like SLI, you can run by sixteen or by eight by eight. If you run by eight by eight, the peripherals are in the same IOMMU group, so it's not great. If you're going to run a single GPU and the iGPU, those are in different IOMMU groups, so you can do that at least at least on the the SLI um, Gaming Pro Carbon AC Z Z370 version. So, um, so let's just take a moment to recognize the Java jokes on Coffee Lake. We get it. We're not laughing because it's not funny, but you can stop doing it. How many LEDs does one header support? Uh, we got a whole strip on this one. Yeah. It's so three amps on five and 12, 12 volts. If you can see that, that's several. The answer is several. <laughs> three amps. PUBG is the worst. How, yep. how dare you? Is Wendell optimized for PUBG? He uh, he takes way too long to loot. <laughs> Did anybody else not land with me? I don't think anybody else lands with me. So that's what we're working with in terms of CPU utilization on this machine. We're rocking a steady 4.32 gigahertz. This is not even overclocked. Like, you guys want to overclock it? You probably should ask them that because they probably can't hear me. Yeah, go ahead and do that. I'm going to answer for them. <laughs> Can you configure RGB in the UEFI or software only? The Mystic Light is software, but you, there are some basic settings in the in the UEFI, right? Um, I don't remember. I, yeah, I think it's mostly just Mystic Light. Yeah, I think you, you're going to want the Mystic Lights thing because it's broken down into all these different zones and stuff. So, uh, yeah, expect to use software. That uh, The MSI guys might correct us. Pumpkin spice coffee lake thermal paste. That would be nice because <laughs> as warm as they get, you know, you could have a nice scent in your home. Do you play PUBG on your Twitch almost exclusively these days? Because we're terrible people. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Ooh, this is a scar. Is there an API for Mystic Lights? I don't know. Again, that is a question for the MSI people lurking in the chat. What is their username? Uh, Mark. Mark is one of them. Mark. How fast can the LEDs flash? Uh, I think there's a slider to control that, and also there's brightness sliders. So. I don't know what the max level is, but I'm sure you can make it god awful. You see this guy right here, he's flashing pretty quick. I don't know if you can see the back. Well, it stopped doing it. It's cycling through all the modes. Stupid studio lights. Yeah, so like 100 FPS, it's not too bad. It's like one core is pegged. Decent utilization on the other cores. Someone just asked that question. If you're getting more than one core out of PUBG and we are monitoring it right now, and the answer is yes. So if you're not, maybe it's time for you to upgrade to Coffee Lake. <laughs> oh, the MSI might be answering questions on their Facebook. So you might want to ask those questions there. We didn't mention that. They have MSI's Facebook. We are simulcasting to them. Although you won't be able to see the cool monitor behind me. This is the B monitor on YouTube. So you can watch just this and it's totally fine. I don't know anything about RGB. Is there a common interface that all vendors adhere to? One software to control any RGB? Well, when you're talking about the RGB strips, that is a standard, yes. But most motherboard vendors have their own proprietary thing for controlling that. Uh, these... Does the carbon 
Oh yeah, the car. So the carbon and the Godlike Gaming have headers for these external strips. Again, you can see here these guys. You can. Uh, this has got support for the Corsair stuff too. Yeah, and uh, like we talked about earlier, there's stuff we've not experimented with it, but it will communicate with your games and change the LEDs based on your health in a game or something like that. Not all games, of course, but I'm sure they're adding support as things go. All right, let's overclock it. <laughs> How long will it take until cars have RGB headlights? I believe, doesn't BMW have a headlight situation that is at least LED? Now for the overclock, I'm going to go for the lazy way out. I'm just going to change the dial on the motherboard. There's literally a dial on the motherboard. I'm just going to change the dial on the motherboard and we're going to go, you know, well past whatever. It's the one that goes up to 11. Let's turn it up to 5-ish. That is exclusive to the Godlock Gaming, of course. As we mentioned earlier, a lot of bells and whistles on that one that the other ones don't have. I feel like the electrical engineer behind that's a Spinal Tap fan. Game booth set 10 enabled. It is not recommended to do any modifications under the OC menu. It posted so far. What is my favorite dinosaur? There's so many, dude. So many favorites, I can't pick one. Well, I need two Ethernet ports if I want a network connection on a host OS and a virtual machine simultaneously. Well, with the Godlike Gaming, that's not a problem because you've got three built in. Yeah. Well, the other motherboards are just one. Turn off the studio lights, then you won't be able to see us. What is the workstation performance like on these systems? I mean, it's pretty good. You know, uh, if you're just going for workstation, uh, these are probably pretty good options because of the price. I don't know if, if you would compare them favorably to the Ryzen options because of the cores and all that stuff, but uh, they're perfectly functional for sure. Depends on what you're doing. I mean, if what you're doing will need will work with more cores, but keep in mind that even though these are only six cores with a mild overclock, you can match performance on eight cores on another platform. So, They wouldn't put it there if nobody liked it. Explain 3D TVs. Did 3D TVs not fail spectacularly? Can you still get those? I don't, I think, I don't think you can. Yeah, that's, that's sort of a natural selection. I think RGB has been around long enough that we can... It's, it's not a flash in the pan. It'll change someday, I'm sure. But uh, for now, people like it. Yeah, we're, ro we're rocking a 4.95 gigahertz on just playing PUBG. What... Uh, Number on the dial was that? Uh, 10. Oh. And that's on the i7. And that's on the i7, yeah. Which I think 4.9 is, uh, it was unstable at 5, right? It, well, it's I didn't push the voltage that much, so. But this is also real world as opposed to artificial benchmarks. So I should, I should be clear that the temperatures that we're talking about is not real world usage. It is when we were hammering it with things like Prime 95 and Cinebench and just like CPU at 100% utilization. Obviously, if you're playing PUBG, you're, all of your cores are not going to be like hammered at 100%. If you're rendering, they're hammered at 100%. So, you know, we can see in hardware monitor that it's boosting up to 5.2 gigahertz, which is nuts, but it's not stable if you're going to have all those CPUs at 100%. So yeah, we're at 53 degrees C. We peaked. We peaked at 71. Um, 
and uh, yeah, we let's see, what's our peak core temperature? I mean, our core clock speed. Is that the six core at four point nine? These are both six core that we have here. You might. Uh, this is the i seven. This is the i five. Yeah, so I've I've hit a peak clock of five point one gigahertz here. Oh, I forgot to run Fraps. In your opinion, what is the best setup for developers? What do you mean in terms of like workspace or OS or it's more, it's more cores, lots of cores. Yeah, I mean, uh, developers need fast disks and lots of cores. I don't know if. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about compiling things and you have the budget for it, then you probably would want to go up to a higher core count than these would give you. Not that these can't do that. Content creators. Well, if you're editing your own video, of course, we did mention that uh, these are not ideal for video editing. They'll certainly do it, but core count you know you got your six out of 12 threads on the i7 so eh, you could probably go up in core count without spending too much more and get way better performance How long until the RGB craze turns our cooling fans into rotary status displays? So you haven't seen the new stuff from Corsair, I take it. <laughs> the SLI has specific headers just for the Corsair stuff. It's been pretty pretty nuts, really. For people who need many cores, Threadripper versus i9, that... The comparisons, we don't have an i9, at least not the, the crazy one. Do we have any of those? We have the 10 core. So if you're talking about the 18 core i9, uh, you know, it's all about price. You're paying double, actually it's more than double, for a little bit better performance. I think the, the, the high core count i9s outperformed Ryzen in almost every way, but not by a whole lot. So... It's double the price. For slightly better. It's a little bit better. I mean, if you have to have it, if you're if you're desperate for the best, the you ask the question without qualification. Yeah, those high core i nines are incredible, but they are just stupid expensive. So. Should I go for i5-8400 or i5-8600K for gaming? Well, I mean, for gaming, you the overclock is probably a good idea. I would be surprised because uh, you got to get the Z370 chipset right now anyway, which is the overclocking support. So unless you get the non-overclockable part for a lot less, then you might as well get it and overclock it because it's basically a free overclock if your cooling is decent to just overclock it to where all of the cores run at the maximum stated turbo. I would be really surprised if anyone gets a chip that won't do that. So on our B camera right now, we're running PUBG with fraps and I've also got the hardware monitor, I also got a hardware monitor on top of PUBG so that you can see what the temperatures and clock speed and voltage and that kind of thing is like. Can I set a temperature target? Uh, I don't know. Did you look at the UFI? It supports the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, so you can do a lot of stuff like that with the Intel uh, Extreme Tuning Utility, so it's a lot of fun. Techie for Life says, Hala from Saudi Arabia. You guys rock. Gave us $5. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully this is a lot of fun. Tell your friends. Got to get more people watching, get more people excited. I mean, we're desperate for subs. Desperate. <laughs> I just like playing with the new technology. I mean, it was just, it's like, why, it's like, why is this, you know, why are you guys doing this? It's like, cause there's something new. Cause just, cause I want to look at it. Uh, 
Uh, oh, I'm in play, finally. Pro tip for all you PUBGers out there. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you this. So a lot of people cheat and they ride. They have, uh, they're not actually playing. They're just farming the funny money to buy the crates and sell them. So they, their characters just stay in the plane till the end. If you also stay in the plane till the end, you can just beat them to death for free kills. You know, if that's your thing. Kind of cheap, but I know some people that do it. Can you recommend a motherboard for the 8700K, which is tailored for overclocking? Well, I'm going to guess that you just joined us. <laughs> this one literally has a knob on the motherboard, which you turn and it overclocks, which you just displayed uh, 4.9 out of the 8700K. So the Godlike Gaming, which, I mean, really, again, if you're not going to qualify your questions with what is the best motherboard that you've seen for Coffee Lake that does X, the answer is going to be the Godlike Gaming. Now it is $500. But again, if you don't qualify it, that's going to be our answer because it really is the, you know, it's the best one you can get that we've seen. They fixed the farming so you can't do it. Oh, wow. I run a Tomb Raider now. Good reason. Yeah, Tomb Raider is running the benchmark. Woo! Any tips for Linux beginners? People ask that question a lot. And uh, we've actually talked about trying to do a series of like, you know, what to do when you, as an absolute beginner. But I think you really just have to ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish with Linux? And then just go figure out how to do that. Because if you learn something, and you don't use it or you don't see a value in it, then you won't retain it. But if you're solving a problem with Linux, you'll remember how you did that. No audio on the B stream. We are aware of that. Yeah, because it's coming from a different computer. It's coming from over there. So our audio setup's not hooked into the B stream. What graphics card? The graphics card on the machine that you're watching now is 1080 Ti. Uh, the uh, the other one that we have not demoed is uh, t just a 1080. Accidentally left VSync on apparently. What do you think about buying a used dual Xeon workstation rather than building a new Threadripper system when it comes to price performance ratio? That's a core thing again. It's hard It's hard to beat used hardware when it comes to the price performance ratio, especially if you get a good deal. But if you want new platform features, it's a tough call. Will MSI make an ITX Z370? I think the answer is almost a certainty, yes. But... I'm, they might be answering those questions on their Facebook stream if you want to check that out. If I get a 8700K, will chicks dig me? Ah, <laughs> that's a good question. You know, how do you, when you uh, bring a woman to your home, how do you smoothly introduce the, the CPU that you have? Because we all know that, you know, you don't want to seem like you're bragging about it, but you do want to let her know. <laughs> Uh, you want to go get some D DQ? Yeah, let's hop in my Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, so I think maybe before you leave for your date, you just leave some benchmarks running. And when you get back, you'll be like, oh, hang on. Before we watch Netflix, let me turn off these benchmarks. I was just testing my new 8700K. Mark says we will probably make at least one model of Z370 ITX. So there you go. 
What uh, what will be the temperature of the i5 8600K if I use an air cooler with the price maximum of around seventy five dollars? You probably, I mean, just keep an eye on your voltages. So it's, it probably won't be won't be bad. Honestly, like the the um, the Hyper Two One Two Evo from Cooler Master still does a, a really good job, even though that's like an ancient CPU cooler that's available everywhere. So I would be surprised if you have because like at stock voltages, the coffee like really doesn't get that hot. It's just when you add more voltage that it starts to really produce a lot. Of, it, it, it retains heat, I guess, would probably be a better way to explain it. So, Which motherboard Z370 has three M.2s? That is the Godlike Gaming. Jason XK2, what's the PCIe lane count distribution? So Z370 is still 16 PCI Express lanes to the CPU, plus four for the DMI, which is basically PCI Express 3.0. The DMI interface to the chipset has PCI Express, like more PCI Express lanes. We covered all that earlier in the in the, in the video, but it's still basically 16 plus four. It's basically the same setup as Z270, except the chipset, the Z370 chipset will support some more peripherals, but there's not really more bandwidth, like more total bandwidth into the CPU. Oh, I got to correct Mark. Mark says that our Z370 Godlike has three M.2. No, it has five. You can run five because you get this card. This card is nuts. Uh, check it out. Like this, the, the Godlike comes with this PCI Express card, which is two M.2. So you could run up to five M.2 on the Z370 Godlike Gaming. Now, three of the M.2 is through the chipset, but these two CPU lanes, no bottleneck. Yeah, there's there. Wow, Jesus. <laughs> Are you guys in the B camera seeing the FPS on Tomb Raider? Uh, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's kind of nuts. All right, so the, the, it's uh, 128 average on Mountain Peak. Um, 121 on Syria and 112 on Geothermal Valley. The maximums were 304 frames per second, 152, and 154. Wow, that's kind of crazy. 1080p, you know, medium settings, but good lord, that's nuts. <laughs> Timmy Tech TV's here. How's it going? Coffee Lake launched. Woo! So let's we'll see what else we're gonna do. What else we got to benchmark? CPU utilization was pretty good for that too. Yeah, with our our so. Uh, Check it out in the uh, the hardware monitor, just monitoring while we've been doing benchmarks. Our maximum core clock of 5.1 gigahertz, 5127 megahertz. We've only hit a peak temperature of 81 degrees C. With, and this is with auto overclock. Like We could tune it a little bit and lower the voltage very slightly and probably achieve even better thermals for the same clocks. So but we literally didn't have to do anything. We just turned the knob and basically we're, we're good to go. Timmy Tech TV gave us five dollars. Aw, Timmy, you don't have to do that. We love you just the same anyway. Can you test 7800X versus 8700K? We have not done any head-to-head -head testing because we just got these. And uh, we may do stuff like that in the future. All of you who are asking like, is X better than Y? We have not put anything head to head at this point. So <laughs> we, we can say that the six core X299 is the inferior choice to the six core, uh, you know, Z370 though.
Yes, home NAS. You you don't need to throw a coffee lake at a home NAS. <laughs> <laughs> you can go. You can cheap on those. You get those uh, Zeons they were talking about there. Those used Zeons. The Godlike Gaming is running in NVMe, not SATA. Yeah, the i5 is Octane. Oh, we can redo the network connection thing. Uh, you guys want to see the network go fast? I don't know if I can find a shortcut for it. Wherever I put it. If you guys can't hear that, he is running the rerunning the network test. So for all of you who have just joined us, the, the Guy Like Gaming has three killer nicks, and we have all three of them hooked up, and we are getting around 300 megabytes per second. Uh, it also can be used to sort of simulate a router and wireless, has two wireless nicks uh, with those three connections, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the graph is 339 megabytes per second. And see how it's basically just a flat line? Yeah. Three gigabit NICs. No bottleneck there. <laughs> it's running at, at wire speed. <laughs> how to impress ladies slash guys with your new godlike motherboard? You know, maybe we should do like some man on the street. Uh, interviews and ask women what they think about RGB. I really want to get the uh, Mystic Light Party Sync hooked up to Internet of Things. I want the, 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 the nightstand lamps in my bedroom and maybe like some really subtle under bed RGB lighting. <laughs> like maybe we can take an LED strip around like the bottom. What would trigger the party mode? Like what event in your home? There's a mobile app on your phone. No, but I'm saying like you have to automate it, right? Like what you want party mode to kick in when something happens. So like, it, is it when the Bitcoin price hits a certain amount? I think it's, you go on a date and then, you know, they walk you to your door and it's like, hey, do you want to come in for some coffee or some popcorn or something? Okay, that sounds good. And then you just very uh, slyly take out your phone and hit the party mode button and then that changes the mode of the house. <laughs> some popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that not what the kids snack on these <laughs> Oh, there's the pro tip, everybody. When you bring a date back, when you're getting out of the car and you're going to make that move, it's like, hey, listen, I got some pop secret. Let's put this, your name on it. <laughs> it's gluten free. Presumably you've had some food. You're not really hungry, but, you know. A little something to take the edge off. <laughs> uh. So, uh. Yeah, I think we might be running out of steam here. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? I mean, the the i five is for sure the uh, the value uh, the value board. So does anybody have any or the value CPU in terms of like price per dollar? But good lord, those clocks, that speed, it's nuts. When during the first date, do you mention the three killer Nicks? Well, so you, instead of watching Netflix, you're like, oh, actually, you know what? I've got this on the NAS. Let me just copy it. And it's like, oh, the Blu-ray rip? Let me just copy that real quick. It'll be a couple of minutes. And then she's like, oh, my God, is that 300 megabytes per second? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we literally just copied nine gigabytes. That's like an hour of footage that was shot here at this desk. And we copied it in three minutes. So... You can definitely get your entire video library wherever it needs to be for whatever you want to call your home media server and chill. If I want a game and save money, i5, yes. So we talked about that earlier. 
the i5 option is the sweet spot for budget gaming. Uh, save that money, put it toward a video card, and you will get more out of it than if you bought a more expensive CPU. Oh yeah, the GPU is still by far the bottleneck on, on things. But we do have, uh, oops, we do have a fun peripheral to test, which is, um, yeah, look at that, 10 gig, 10 gigabit NIC. So we can actually test that dual 10 gig NIC actually. So this is 20 gigabits of connectivity. We can see what happens there. Now, when running this peripheral, I will probably have to give up some of the CPU connectivity probably throw my GPU at by eight because I don't know. Well, it, it might work okay through the chipset lanes. I don't know. It'd be worth a try because it, it, the a 10 gig, that's a gigabyte per second. So it's only one quarter of my DMI bandwidth. That might not be terrible. Can you list the motherboards in the description of the stream? I think we're going to have a page on our website. Yes. For all of that. There is a page on the level one text website. that's going to have high res pictures and info on literally every single board here. And we're doing full reviews of the Godlike Gaming and the um, SLI Carbon AC, uh, it's the MSI Z370 uh, Carbon AC Pro, uh, probably next week, week after, something like that. So, you know, full in-depth Linux testing review, whole nine yards. What about the locked i7? We only have the the K parts. We've, we've not tested the other ones. Yeah. It looks like the locked i5 is the best bang for the buck, though. Rest in peace, Ryzen. I don't think that th these are Ryzen killers necessarily. <laughs> uh, you know, the these are six cores, so there are a lot of uses beyond six cores. Yes. Can you show the block diagram? Do we have, we might put that on the website. Oh yeah, the the website will have the block diagrams. I've got them all for all of the boards. So the, uh, that will be on the website. So uh, be sure to uh, bookmark the Level 1 Text website for that. So we went over that verbally in the, at the beginning of the stream, but uh, we'll have that in visual or article form uh, probably end of the day, maybe tomorrow, something like that. We have not tried to mine coins with, it, with any of these. That's a GPU thing anyway. I mean, I, you could do Monero maybe, but... Yeah, he said coins that use the CPU, but... Uh, more cores is going to be right. better for that. Why every reviewers are showing some expensive $350 plus motherboards for a mainstream platform. Hey, we got these guys over here. What was the, what the cheapest one? Was uh, It was very inexpensive. It was... Uh, 149 or 139 139 for the well you can't see that anymore but the the furthest one on the left here was 139 that's the pc pro and the sli plus was this the sli plus um i think sli plus might be one of those yeah sli there. plus is over here none neither one of those support sli but the sli plus is 149 so oh yeah the sli plus is uh one of these so you can get kind of fancy and still not spend a ton of money. Yeah, so there are affordable choices here, and uh, you know, if you can live without SLI, I don't think SLI is super popular anymore. So we talked about budget gaming. If you're gonna get the one thirty nine ninety nine motherboard, you're gonna get the i five, maybe the locked version. Put all the rest of that money in an NVMe and a graphics card. You're all set. Yeah, if you if 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 saving money is important, you might wait a little while and see. If a new, if an alternative chipset comes out, because if you don't plan to buy an overclockable CPU, you may be better off with another chipset that um, doesn't, that also doesn't support overclocking, because those motherboards will be a little bit less expensive. I think our thoughts on Monero versus Bitcoin are outside the scope of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Is this only a paper launch? No, you could definitely buy CPUs today, and the motherboards and everything, all the accessories, everything is for sale. I think it's just a shipping logistics thing. There's probably a container ship somewhere that's unloading or has some paperwork or whatever. Newegg earlier was saying that orders would be filled within seven to 10 days, but then they moved it from like 10 to 14 days, and now it just says out of stock. So I don't know what's going on at Newegg, but very early today, CPUs were in stock. And of course, there's motherboards everywhere because the motherboards did, motherboard vendors did not mess up their... Uh, 
their logistics. So, regarding the 5 NVMe, can the board support PCIe 3.0 by 8 GPU connections and 5 and how it has a PLX chip? Yeah, so, these two, like this expansion card, goes through the CPU. The other three M.2 go through the chipset. So my recommendation, if you want maximum performance, that you only use a maximum of three, not five, NVMe. Because these two are directly into the CPU, no bottleneck. And then one of your M.2 through the DMI plus all the other peripherals is probably okay because you're probably not going to have any other high-speed peripherals through your PCH. So that's, you know, 12 gigabytes read and write performance um, of your M.2 if you want to go that route. So if you have slower M.2s, you can run more M.2s off of the PCH without bottlenecking. But if you're getting the really expensive, you know, the 960 Pro, it's like three and a half gigabytes per second read, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, OCZ RD400, which is what we've got in our test system, you know, that's over two and a half gigabytes per second. So you could run two of those through the PCH and only have a little bit of bottlenecking. But the two that are on the expansion card are CPU lanes, no bottlenecking. And your GPU does end up running it by eight. Yeah, Spear of Neptune was able to buy an 8700K, one of only five. Yeah, the way that this supply chain usually works is they'll send a small quantity by air and everything else comes through container ship, so. RAM and GPU prices are a little high due to the cost of memory chips being kind of high because everybody's buying memory chips for everything. Oh, it looks like... All right, what do you think? One more game? Let's see, what game do we want to play? Um, We've gotten some odd requests, but I don't know if we have those. I don't think benchmarking Minecraft is going to answer too many burning questions. CS:GO. I don't. I don't know that. Do you? Uh, we're not. We're not hardcore enough for CS:GO. No latency is good though. How many cats would I have to sell to buy one of these? Cats are not super valuable. I mean, because you can kind of get them for free. So I guess it depends on your local cat market. Show the bigger screen. Well, I mean, we don't have, we can't switch between the two to show you the, that's all you're going to get of it. I could zoom in on it if we want to do that. Well, it's, the, it's overexposed, so that won't help. I'm trying to think if there's any other games I got installed. Dwarf Fortress, I think Dwarf Fortress is purely CPU and memory speed. Well, this would actually be a good platform for Dwarf Yeah, Fortress. probably would be really good for Dwarf Fortress. What should we play? I don't know. Yeah, we're probably good. I'll do more PUBG, I don't care. When are you going to make a live stream on the Monero question? What's the Monero question? Whether or not it's... You're talking about the JavaScript thing? Can you run Metro Last Lie? I think we do have that. Does it play 8K video? Well, I think that would more depend more on the uh, GPU. Why is the board on the right going crazy? That's just, it's showing you the 
wide variety of <laughs> RGB that you get. Some of the motherboards have a button where you can change the RGB modes, and uh, this one, I don't know what we did, but it was it was kind of crazy. They uh, they do have a party mode, like we talked about. You press the party button, and they just go insane. And <laughs> it's kind of like uh, I want to meet the person whose default RGB setup is party mode. Like they're always in party mode. <laughs> Yes, it does have integrated graphics. Woo! <laughs> Don't we have work to do? <laughs> we are taking time out of our work day to bring you this. Because <laughs> we love you. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> That's funnier because... <laughs> I'm not reading that one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> it's funnier because we know the, the background of that situation. <laughs> it's too bad you can't do like a reverse donation, like take some of the money people have given you and then like send it back out to somebody in the chat. Can I play Tetris on the RGB? Now, if you got yourself a uh, controller, you probably could program that. I don't think it's you off, they offer it out of the box. I have been trying to get better at a fruit NeoPixel support on the programmable RGB controller because uh, they have NeoPixel panels that you can get for the motherboards. And so if you want to do an 8x8 or a 16x16 16 16 LED grid and control it through the software, I think you should be able to do that. I mean, if we're going to embrace the RGB motherboard, we need to like mega embrace the RGB motherboard. So I don't know, can we, uh, we could probably, we could probably go there in a browser if I can find the keyboard. It's over here. I lost the keyboard. I'll show you. I can. I have the power. I can show you, even though I'm kind of playing PUBG, but not really. Um, woo! Oh, I don't have the mouse. Stop playing with RGB so it goes away. We do not have that level of power in the industry. I've seen the numbers from the industry. People want RGB. It's kind of insane. We have to bend with the storm. We can't stand against it or we will be uprooted and destroyed. Oops. Crap. It's a window capture. You'll have to make a new... Oh, there you go. All right. So this is an 8x8 RGB LED pixel grid. Um, and it's kind of nuts. I can kill somebody. Hang on. <laughs> Beating down a AFK funny money miner in PUBG right now. You can't see it. I want you to switch back. <laughs> there you go. That's probably not easy for them to see, but uh, just a and it's a female player too, so really, not really. I mean, I'm sure. really a hate crime going on here. Oh wait, she's fighting back. <laughs> she's not AFK after all. One of them did not. Uh. Well, they got me. Rocco Nine, clearly, clearly female. Yeah, so that's an LED grid. Uh, and it, eight by eight oh, yeah, or, or sixteen it. by sixteen or whatever. And so uh, this for the programmable motherboard LED headers. This is a thing. This is a thing that we need in software. We need this like yesterday because if we're going to embrace the RGB, why not? Why don't we just go ahead and do that? Otherwise, I'm going to be sticking a five dollar Raspberry Pi inside my machine to be using that as an RGB controller for something like this. I mean, can you imagine how cool that would look if you just had a stack of those behind like a tempered glass front panel on a case? And then you were displaying, like using it as a marquee and displaying text or system stats or the number of people that are logged into your machine or, you know, whatever. So, it'd be a lot of fun. I died. I meant to number 80.
Now I just want to point out that this thing is still overclocked. Like it hasn't rebooted or done anything weird. And yeah, 5.1 gigahertz. We've played a variety of games. We've we've gone nuts. I think the uh, the hardware monitor maximum reported temperature was uh, 81 degrees C. So not completely terrible. But we've also been kind of conservative on the voltage. Like we haven't really put a ton of voltage into the CPU to try to get it to do that. I think the I think the train is running out of steam. <laughs> yeah, we must soon go. Does anybody have any final parting question, whatever, like with this launch and all of the stuff that is coming soon? How did you get it so multiple screens are shown? Are you talking about in YouTube or back there? That's just you know, 1080 tag will run multiple outputs. On the stream, oh, somebody got an email, that was me. Uh, the stream, we're just switching inputs with our, our handy little number pad here. So, OBS. What well, CPU, that is the uh, i7 uh, 8700K, is that what it is? We got the 87 and the 86. But what you're seeing back there is the 8700K. Yeah, what we're restreaming is 87. We can switch to the 86. You want to see the 86? The 86 with Intel Optane Ooh, on a mechanical hard drive. What's your opinion on guys who play as girls in video games? You know, that's a great question because on our Twitch stream from time to time, we'll bring people in from the stream to play with us as a fourth on PUBG. A lot of them are female characters. And I, uh, I always ask them what's going on and they never have a good answer for it. They always just sort of sheepishly dust it off. So I'm not going to speculate. <laughs> whatever they prefer. Uh, of course, as you know, in the modern world, we cannot judge anybody for choosing a gender. It does seem like the, the frames per second at 1080p is a little higher with the, with the crazy overclocks. I like the colors MSI picked for these motherboards. Thank them for sponsoring Level 1 Techs. Well, you'll be excited to hear that the same colors come on your cabling. That, this is with the Godlike Gaming. I don't know about the other ones. Uh, and they also offer you these handy magnetic back panel strips. So you can go with uh, red text on silver and black, or you can go with silver text on red and black. So yeah, the ultimate customization there. And also, just because there might be some new people and we need to talk about them again, crab claw Wi-Fi antennas. You're not going to get this anywhere else. I can guarantee you that. Look at those things. Fantastic. Who are we gonna kill? Look at that. 120, well, I'm inside, but like 100 plus FPS. It's impressive in PUBG. That is not a game that well, gives away the FPS is freely. Worst case scenario is like 110. <laughs> Anime swords. Do they work? Yes, they do work. I mean, you know, this is you have a coating. So here's a regular antenna with a coating on it. These are just more extreme. You know, the antenna itself is under there. It's still going to work the same. Is the crab organic? No, it's plastic. Molded plastic. Those are plate holders holding the motherboards. <laughs> we were trying to figure out how can we show all the motherboards at once. And uh, Krista, who spends an overwhelming amount of time at craft stores, immediately recognized the solution. So yes, those are plate holders. The cheapest ones we could buy. Sweet. 
Swiss Glitcher gave us uh, CHF five dollars. What is what is CHF? Is that the Swiss franc? Uh, that's a good guess. When does the WX seventy one hundred series continue? Uh, we've got about half the benchmarks for that done. They updated the driver, which uh, provided a dramatic uplift in performance, and so we got to retest. Do you think i3 is going to be a good budget CPU this year? If you're talking about Coffee Lake, uh, we would encourage you to go with the i5 instead for maximum value for the dollar. Because the i3 is 4 4. Did any crabs die to bring me that antenna? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if you look closely at them, they're... <laughs> Maybe a billion years ago that made the oil that went into the plastic. <laughs> How recent are crabs? They're probably pretty old. These are... Uh, this is more of like a... I don't know what how you would describe this. Like a, uh, a steampunk crab. Because it's all sharp angles and everything. Plus, the pincher doesn't function. It's, it's held in place, so it would be useless. I think that species of crab would not last. Natural selection would take them out quickly. It is the Swiss franc. 8700K is 419 Swiss francs. Wow. Do we think everybody in AMD is panicking right now? Uh, probably not. I think they are, they're probably sitting smugly saying, look what we made them do. Because I don't think we would have seen this right now. This is an unusual release for Intel. So this is a reaction and it's great. We shouldn't complain about it. I mean, it's fantastic for the industry, but uh, I think it, AMD's fine. I died. <laughs> Are the MSI dudes running late? No, he's been answering questions. They're also on their Facebook, so they might be switching between the two. This is a, uh, you know, who wins with this kind of a launch? Consumers. Consumers win because look at this. Look at look. Twenty seventeen has been crazy. January one, twenty seventeen, KB Lake launches i seventy seven hundred K five gigahertz out of the box. It was an improvement over Skylake, which basically topped out at four and a half gigahertz, unless you really did some Herculean things. And so here we are 10 months later, almost to the day, and we're increasing the number of cores on the mainstream chipset by 50%, which, you know, for like for gamers and people that are doing work that doesn't need a lot of cores or people that are doing work that benefits more from a high clock speed versus uh, more core count, this is pretty good. It's only 10 months later. This is kind of unheard of. I'm, I'm very surprised that, you know, think about from like a vendor perspective. Motherboard manufacturers rolled out Z270 brand new chipset motherboard only 10 months ago. And Z370 is not backward compatible. So, you know, that's basically, you know, quote unquote obsolete. Now, to be sure, a 7700K is still, you know, a really top performer in terms of like gaming performance and single thread performance. But now you can have a six core 7700k if you will the performance and the characteristics are very similar the clocks you can't achieve clocks quite as high on average with the i7 and the i5 but you're close you're still at that magical roughly five gigahertz um ballpark maybe you have a slightly lower percentage of being able to reach that but if that is what you're after if the maximum performance there then yeah if you want maximum platform longevity I mean, we're, there are people that are still rocking five-year-old uh, Sandy Bridge systems. On a five-year time scale, I don't know that six cores is enough. It's, it probably is like eight plus or ten plus cores because those were really nice systems a long time ago. But, you know, time will tell. It's also true that these six cores are so fast that they are faster than the eight-core CPUs from the competing platform barely at the low end of the, the eight-core clock. So... Overclock a little bit, and you can widen the margin um, that those CPUs have. So it's really it's a it's an exciting time for hardware. It really is. Can't argue with more choices, and that's basically what this is. 
this is kind of a third choice. You know, you've got your expensive Intel stuff, you've got your AMD stuff, and now you've got this. So we shouldn't complain. We've taken a look at the, uh, the Core i5. We've taken a look at the Core i7. We've taken a look at game benchmarks, performance overclocking, auto overclocking. Um, what else? Uh, is there anything else before we go? Uh, as we mentioned, go to our website, level1text.com. I don't. Is it up yet? Um, let's see. We've got a placeholder article. Uh, sometime before the end of the day. Uh, we will have information about all these motherboards, more, you know, details about them. Uh, there's a link under the L1 news on the, on the left side. And, uh, there will be links on that page to the individual motherboards, voltage regulation. We've got like, if you want to know like what the voltage regulators are and the heat sinks and, and, uh, peripheral, like the, the IO and all the pictures and stuff like that from the live stream, those are being put together right now. And so that should be on the website. Um, if not today, then tomorrow. And then we'll have full reviews of the Godlike and the Carbon AC uh, in the next few days, next week, maybe maybe early the week after, something like that. So along with a lot of other Z370 coverage, this has just been like the Z370 launch mega stream. Give me everything that I want to know. Let's sit, let's have a fireside chat about Coffee Lake because it's new and it's only been 10 months since Intel put out new CPUs. What in the hell is going on? You know, originally before everything was delayed, uh, Coffee Lake was not supposed to be out alongside KB Lake. KB Lake was supposed to be out way sooner, and Coffee Lake was supposed to be out way sooner. Like Coffee Lake originally was supposed to be like January, February of this year, and KB Lake even before that. But <laughs> Intel's had some process. Turns out that two things are at work here. One, shrinking things is really hard. I mean, we went from like you know, 60 nanometers to 30 nanometers in one generation. And now we're going from like 12 to 14 to 10. Uh, but the other thing is you can only multiply two numbers together so fast. The speed of light starts to become a problem. At five gigahertz, light has enough time to move about that far in one clock tick. One five billionth of a second, how fast is speed of light, the fastest thing that there is. Light can move about that far in one clock tick in one five billionth of a second. Think about that. That's kind of nuts. So you can only multiply two numbers so fast. And some people might think, well, they rushed this out and, you know, it's it, we don't need it right now. But, but it's best for the consumer. We are in our best possible world yeah. when Intel and AMD are both terrified <laughs> and, you know, fighting from their back foot and doing everything like fighting over price, fighting over performance, doing everything they can to woo us as the consumer. That's the world we want to live in. That's the world we want to promote. <laughs> well, with that, I think we're going to leave you with those parting words of wisdom. Uh, look for our reviews. Do please thumbs up and share, and we'll probably leave this live, although, my goodness, it's quite long. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thanks again for the donations. If anybody made it all the way through, we get a special commendation <laughs> for that. <laughs> nice. Thank you all. I'm Wendell. I'm Ryan. And we'll see you on the forums. Crab claws. <laughs> get your crab claws. <laughs>